Welcome to our Tech Talk Show. Today we have a special guest who specializes in disruptive innovation such as uh, artificial intelligence. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for it's having a fun me. Today. Journey. Thanks for having me. How are you today? Good. <laughs> uh, excited to be here. Palandrani, can you introduce yourself? to our audience? Absolutely. My name is Pedro Palandrani, Director of Thematic Research at Global X ETFs, and I cover our team uh, of analysts who specialize on many different disruptive technologies such as artificial intelligence, robotics, electric vehicles, metaverse, blockchain technology, and so many others. Yeah, he's <laughs> a director of all things. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> So let's dive right into the AI. So we've seen some incredible uh, innovations is coming from uh, the cutting edge AI technology, yes. which is called generative AI. Yes. So the most popular service is ChatGPT by yes. OpenAI. So have you ever tried Palindrome? I have, I so have many how, times. Mm, how often? Uh, I would say uh, at least three or four times per week. Uh, per I week. try it uh, for things like uh, text summarization. So, mm -hmm. you know, we have to read a lot every single yes, day of right. our lives. There is so much information that mm. we need to consume. Mm. So just, you can copy and paste a white paper um. and ask uh, ChatGPT or other generative AI platform to actually summarize that for you. Of course, it's not perfect and we need to yes. pay attention to mm. that, but I think it definitely helps you uh, specifically on text summarization, but we're even seeing companies mm. and businesses using using it for other things like mm. virtual assistants. Mm. So there are so many different applications here. But I strongly believe people are massively concerned that they could lose their job because in the event of AI, in the foreseeable future, uh, the machine work better, work harder. People know it. <laughs> for instance, there is Wendy's Fresh Air AI. Yes. Wendy's Fresh Air AI. Wendy's is teaming up with Google to develop their uh, AI chatbot mm -hmm. uh, that takes your drive through mm -hmm. take in June, uh, maybe, in June, Ohio. Yeah, this year. So, so what about think on that? Yeah, I think, um, as again, as going back to history, every emerging technology from industrial robotics to ATMs in the financial services industry, we've seen this fear of employment mm. displacement, but actually what ends up happening is more that it changes the nature of employment. It doesn't mean that millions of people are just going to get fired overnight. Mm. It just means that a lot of people will face changes in their day-to-day -day jobs, yes, right? right? And just starting to allow humans to focus on uh, add value responsibilities, mm. right? So everything that it's very repetitive, everything that generative AI platforms can do very easily mm. is likely going to be replaced by, by generative AI. But uh, in most cases, in most uh, responsibilities and jobs, I think generative AI is just going to enhance mm. uh, our day-to-day -day responsibilities. They're, it's going to make us more effective and more efficient. Mm, very positive, but, <laughs> yes. but I agree, though. <laughs> but I found some, found some interesting uh, insights about it. In, uh, ten, 10 years ago, Oxford University study predicts that uh, automation will destroy like 50% of jobs in the next decade. But, but by now, we have <laughs> lowest employment rate by now, right? Absolutely. And, and you can see that pretty much all over the world. In the United States, we have only a 3.4% unemployment rate. Mm. And again, we're implementing more automation than ever. Mm. If you look at companies like Amazon, for example, yes. Amazon has a, a very large number of automation and robotics within their warehouses. I know. Yes. However, they continue to hire a lot of humans to do other jobs. So I think that companies that are uh, embracing technology are actually going to be able to hire more. So we shouldn't be afraid of uh, generative AI or artificial intelligence. I think we should embrace it mm -hmm. and continue to implement that in our everyday lives. Yeah, embrace it and study. Exactly. <laughs> And let's talk about AI war between the tech giants like uh, Microsoft, Google, and Meta. They are heating up, heating up. I have ever tried Google's 
brand new AI chatbot, which is named uh, Bard. Bard, correct. Yes. Uh, after using it, I have a conclusion. Uh, GPT-4 is uh, still the king, but the gap among the AI services is uh, closing quickly. So what do you think is uh, the last winner on top of AI competition? I think they're all very close. Certainly, um, more people are using chat GPT just because it was the first to mar market, just as Google, Google search was the first to market. Mm. And now there is certain inertia of just using Google search for search. Mm. The same th is happening with chat GPT, where a lot of people are using chat GPT and perhaps just uh, uh, not as many people are using Google's uh, BARD. However, I think they're all very close to each other in terms of the capabilities that they can bring. For ChatGPT, we're going to see the use in Microsoft uh, solutions, everything from a Microsoft Word to Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint. And Which I, is like I, a co-pilot. Exactly, yeah. and that's going to be very powerful. At the same time, Google is going to be using, uh, doing the same for a lot of their capabilities. So I think these are platforms that are very similar in terms of mm -hmm. uh, uh, technical capabilities of these large language models. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think, uh, even though ChatGPT perhaps is a little bit ahead of uh, Google's Bard, I think they're all um, uh, kind of close to each other. Mm, then why do you have a color on the Meta's growth using the AI technology? Company? Yes, I mean, for a Meta platform, I think the beauty of that is that they're going to enable the use of generative AI to enhance their business model, right? Mm -hmm. So you're seeing in the latest earnings call how Meta Platform actually say that generative AI is going to allow them to increase their revenues that they're generating from ads as these ads become more targeted, better mm -hmm. at doing uh, at, at doing the job, which is just try to uh, allow for advertisers to be very effective and find their audience. So I think um, they say that anywhere between three, uh, 30 to 50 percent of the revenue can actually grow just from generative AI. So for Meta Platform, it's definitely going to be widely monetized. And I think that's why we saw in the stock where uh, now Meta Platform stock went up mm -hmm. just because the revenue opportunities for a company like Meta mm -hmm. are very important. Mm -hmm. I think NVIDIA feels uh, the most happy in the event of AI technology because they, uh, Jensen, CEO Jensen Huang said uh, he uh, have waited for 10 years <laughs> for AI yes. growing up. Yes, so, he even said that uh, j um, this is the iPhone moment for artificial moment, intelligence, yes. right? And uh, actually, as we can see on this slide, um, semiconductors and GPUs, the graphic processing units, just continue to get better. Historically, it's been a, a, an immense progress in terms of the technological applications. And now GPUs are being used for artificial intelligence. They're getting better at um, image recognition, natural language processing, mm -hmm. so many other capabilities. And actually, the latest technology, as we can see on the slide, the new chips, the H100 chips, chips are six times better mm. than the A100, the previous chip. And this is the technology that's being used by most of these generative AI platforms. So clearly companies like Nvidia, companies like AMD, and all of these other GPU manufacturers are one way for investors to access this opportunity. But yes, I think uh, AI technology needs a GPU, but uh, I have concern uh, that GPU price is so high, too, too high uh, for AI, techno, AI tech giants to uh, afford that. So, do you have it, it's, it's high, but historically we've seen the prices of semiconductors just generally coming down, right? Mm -hmm. We can go back to the concept of uh, Moore's law where the mm -hmm. power increases, cost becomes lower. And I think that's really what's happening uh, at the end of the day in the GPU space and access to semiconductors is going to be widely available. Just uh, as they get better, mm -hmm. the price may go up, but I think that um, for all of the uh, positive things that you could achieve with these mm -hmm. GPUs, I think it's worth for companies to explore that. And lastly, can you share your thoughts on the future of artificial technology, especially the generative AI? 
What should investors look out for uh, in these sectors? Absolutely. Uh, and as we can see on, on this slide, uh, over the last few years, uh, generative AI was mostly used for text. Uh, mm. Then we started using it for image recognition mm. or image generation. I think the future of generative AI is going to be in video. Mm. And this concept of dynamic personalization of content. Mm. So I think that we're going to be able to create uh, new, uh, for example, new worlds in video games or uh, new movies that are very personalized for uh, what we like seeing. For example, you can say to these uh, generative AI systems that you want to watch a movie uh, based out of, mm. uh, I don't know, World War One, and with this character, your favorite yeah. character, and you're going to be able to actually get to see... Uh, in my that, own movie your own movie, and that's why the personalization word mm -hmm. is so key. So it's going to be a dynamic personalization of content where we're going to be able to create the, the content that we want to watch and that we relate to, and that's going to be very powerful mm -hmm. when it comes to generative AI. The text to movie? Text to uh, video, it's I, going to be powerful. Yeah, they, I think it would, it would take two years to come. It's definitely not overnight it's going to take some uh, many years uh, from from hardware to software to the data that you need to create video mm -hmm. it's going to take several years but I think that's the direction that's the future of, of generative AI so for the for the environment so I heard that in Hollywood there are massive riots <laughs> against AI technology yeah I mean again going back to the concept of the fear of displacement of em employment I think mm. This is uh, perhaps one of the first uh, cases of, of riots or people just complaining about the use of AI. Mm. But I think at the end of the day, people that are actually embracing this technology are going to fare uh, better than the ones that are actually against the technology. And you're seeing even that in the, mu in the music industry where now yes. singers, DJs are actually mm. uh, allowing the use of their voice to come up with new songs, new, yes. new, new music. Mm by using generative AI, and they're trying to monetize that. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you have other artists that are against that, mm -hmm. and they're not monetizing it. So I think for content creators, from mm -hmm. uh, writing, mm -hmm. to uh, creating music, to creating movies, mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, the winners are going to be uh, the ones that embrace this technology. Okay, fascinating. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. It looks like the future is bright for AI technology. Totally I agree. totally agree. Yes. Thank you for sharing your insights and valuable thoughts with us today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. <laughs>